Westbrook. Looking for James. He's got it. Coming to the end of the third quarter. LeBron James, a shot in history. And welcome to Run It Back. Let's get these intros out of the way, shall we? Stadium Insider and a man who's super, super busy right now, Sham Sharania. I need scoop, Shams. Uh, we got Chandler Parsons, great sweatshirt today, uh, and Eddie G there on the end. Does anybody want to uh, get their emotions out of the way? Anybody cry last night? How are we all feeling? We're, we're, we're actually just no going to crying to you, Michelle. I, I, was, okay. I was hoping for a lot more, you know, tissues, the whole waterworks. I, I was actually expecting that from you, so. Yeah. Oh, yes. No, I was very emotional last night. As we, uh, as you saw, we started the show. He did it. We can talk about it today, and then we can all move on with our lives. LeBron James, 38 points, breaking Kareem's all-time scoring record. Um, it was a big moment, about 10 seconds left in the third. They stopped everything. There were speeches. There were tears. There were cameras in the air. Kareem was even there, handing the ball over. Uh, Chandler, talk to me. Significance of him becoming the NBA's all-time leading scorer. What is it? Uh, it's huge. I mean, it's insane just to think that nobody ever really thought that this Kareem record was going to be broken. And I can confidently say I don't think this will now ever be broken by LeBron because he, this guy's not stopping anytime soon. Uh, and it just speaks volumes. We've said it all week. We've said it all year. It speaks volumes of this dude's work ethic, his longevity, uh, the coaches and teammates, how he's done it with three different teams. Uh, this is a huge, huge stat. And I, I think it's probably the most impressive stat in all of sports. I think it's more impressive than the most home runs or the most touchdowns. I, I think, you know, this kind of puts him even more in an elite status and elite level. And uh, it's awesome. And this was this was a whole show. This was everybody was watching this. I got to be honest. I didn't think he was going to come out gunned and being aggressive like he did. I thought he was going to wait till Thursday uh, and do it against Milwaukee. But clearly he was on a mission. The 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 conversation with him and his kids at halftime, I was going to go get it. I thought was really cool. But this is huge, man. And, and to me, I said it yesterday, to me, this puts him at the top as the greatest of all time. And I know everyone has their opinion and, and you could, I could easily argue that Michael Jordan also is the greatest of all time, but this is super impressive and just speaks volumes of the longevity and just the, the consistency that this guy's had for the last 20 years in the NBA. Uh, look, and that argument will always be, it's personal, right? At the end of the day, it's its who we loved and who we think is, there's no science necessarily. Uh, Eddie, speaking on Michael Jordan, wh I, where do you think he was last night? Do you think he was paying attention? And how does he feel about the record being broken? You know, I think if anybody's confident in his basketball resume, it's Michael Jordan. And I'm sure he's happy for LeBron. I mean, you know, we saw them share a lot of love. I, I was hoping we were going to post this in the All-Star game last year. And, there, the, you know, I thought All-Star game was kind of telling. There was such a reverence for Michael Jordan when he showed up. He showed up passionately late, of course. People were wondering if he was going to show up <laughs> for the 75 team. And, and everybody was excited to see him. Every megastar of today and the past, even Magic Johnson ran to, you know, make good with Mike and so it, it was interesting. So in that sense, Michael's never going to be shook off his confidence, and he's going to always feel like he's the greatest of all time, and he should. But LeBron should as well. This is one of the greatest records in the history of sports. It's a record, like Chandler said, I never thought would be broken, and it's a record that I don't think will be broken anytime soon, uh, if ever. You know, we're talking about shortened seasons coming and things of that nature, and then it's just it, – it's a ridiculous mark. And for him to still be at this level as he breaks this record – it's pretty absurd, you know. When when Kareem was doing his his farewell tour, they were bringing out rocking chairs for him at games, and it, it would almost be offensive to do that to LeBron right now, with as well as he's been playing. And and I'm so happy he didn't do the hook shot. They tried to set it up. I don't know if people could tell, but they absolutely tried to get him on, you know, the left block so he could do a hook shot. And and, and you know, he ended up doing it in his own way. And for as contrived as it felt going in, it was a great moment for the league, a great moment obviously for LeBron and. 
Look, his basketball resume, we'll start with that. X amount all-star, X amount champion, leading scorer in NBA history. And in his GOAT conversation, it starts right there as well because there's only one at the top of that list, and it's now him. It's going to be him forever, probably. Forever? Yeah, I mean, to me, to to, to, to me, it's always going to be him or, or Jordan. Like, it's got to be Jordan, right? Like, you always have to talk about Jordan. But I think what LeBron has done right now in his career is it's definitely going to be a debate. He's put himself in a position where you're always going to have that conversation. Is it is it him or MJ? But I think you, you have to give a lot of, uh, you know, credit to LeBron James, how he's taking care of his body to play at this level, at this stage of his career, to be in this position. Uh, and he's playing at, a, at an, elite, an elite level. It's not like he's kind of just trucking to this moment, you know, like Eddie said, like you're, you're, you're taking him out in a wheelchair. No, like he's looking really good, really crisp or early in the game. I really thought he wasn't, uh, I, I thought he wasn't going to break it initially. I thought he did not look sharp at all to start the game. And then as the game wore on, you can see that that number became so much important uh, to him to reach last night. And I think, uh, you know, he kind of got that monkey off his back. Uh, do we think at, at all, um, you know, I ask you, Chandler, because it's it's a personal record, right? But the team still lost the game. Shout out OKC. Uh, does it matter at all? <laughs> Shut not up, Eddie. <laughs> not, not now in the moment. I mean, you saw the parade they basically had during the game. Um, that was serious. But, I mean, listen, does it make it a little bittersweet? Yeah, because this is, this is the Lakers. They're in a peculiar situation where they need all these games. And this is a team that they should be beating and that they are right there neck and neck with getting into that play in. So yeah, it spoils it a little bit, but this was such a special night. This was such a celebration, such a party that, you know, in the current time, no, I don't think they're thinking about that. I think there's a couple of players on their team that seemed a little upset and not all there, but <laughs> they're, uh, you know, this again, this as much as uh, a distraction as it was, you almost have to take a back seat for a record like this, a game of this magnitude to, to kind of celebrate LeBron. And now it's over. Now, now let's move forward. Now let's, you know, try and win as many games and try and sneak into that play. But yeah, videos like this that are surfacing, there's something yeah. there. And, and this, this, is, this isn't good. Yeah. Can we talk? Well, I want to yeah, talk was, about that. What's up with the, uh, AD? Was he tired? He just needed to sit Eddie. Like what's going on here? Seems kind of odd. I mean, it is odd, and it looks odd, and, and it could be as simple as he was tired. It looked like he was coming from the tunnel, maybe he went to the bathroom. I, I don't know, but <laughs> I, I wouldn't think too hard of it. I mean, th th those guys are oh, tight, really? and, it, and I think last night, you know, I know this is a team game, and I know they're fighting to get in the playoffs, and the Thunder have now passed them in the win column, so they're, they're ahead of them, but... <laughs> This is one of those moments that is bigger than, you know, a Thunder and Lakers game in February. And it, it just is what it is. Now, would I have love for them to close out the game? Absolutely. I mean, LeBron said it when he got done with his ceremony. All right, now let's go win it. He looked like he gassed out a little bit. He didn't finish the game. Something going on with his foot. Uh, and, but testament to the Thunder and, 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 and their composure to get through that moment. And, and all of the fanfare that was going on and go on a huge run in the fourth quarter as, after, they blew, after they lost their lead and win that game. This is a good young team, and they're learning how to win. And, and what more contentious environment could they have than last night? And they figured out how to win as well. They're right behind the Jazz now. Like they're, There's a good chance that these guys are going to be in a play-in, and they're dangerous oh, yeah. if anybody has to win a one-off game against them, like the Lakers found out yesterday. I got to say, though, Eddie, this is – this is a huge night, right? And and the fact that Anthony Davis knew that this would be a situation, right? And knew that this was going to look poorly. I, I, there's something here, man. This this is I, this isn't exhaustion. This isn't hurt. This isn't sick. And then you hear the encounter with LeBron being mic'd up about him just saying, "I just want to, you guys want you to know I love you." Like this is this is very very strange to me and. Uh, again, this is probably a distraction. This is probably very frustrating. LeBron, they, they, they weren't running their usual stuff. It was LeBron getting to the free throw line, LeBron head down. But you have to know in a situation like this that that's what's going to happen. But I think there's something here with the Anthony Davis thing. This this is not normal behavior, especially on a night like this uh, where he clearly didn't care about how this looked or how this was being perceived. Look, if Wait, anybody so knows the cameras are always watching... It's those boys right. of clutch. They know the cameras are on them. So yeah, I hear you. So what do you think I it is you. then? Do you think it's do you think it's simply the one night? Like that night was just like, oh, okay, yeah, let's just get it over with. Or do you think there's because 
in every other encounter we've seen them, everything seems completely and totally fine. But knowing that this is historic and this video will last forever and these pictures will last forever, what else could it be? Is there a bigger issue or it's just, I, I just want this night over with? Shams, we need you to find I, out. Shams, get yeah, out of here. I, I mean, listen, I, 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 I don't know exactly what went into this moment. I'll do some work. Um, but listen, I think the microcosm of last night, yes, LeBron James made history. But the fact that they lost this game at home, this is a pivotal game. Dennis Schroeder just said earlier in the day, we have to win 19 of our next 28 games. Well, they just lost Ooh. another game. So now they have to win 19 of their next uh, 27. So this is, this is a Lakers <laughs> team that th they're, we're two days away from the deadline. You have all day today, most of tomorrow. And I think what Rob Palenka and, and, and the, the front office are trying to determine is what move can we make that really makes this team better and takes it to another level? Because losses like last night do not give you confidence in this team. Kyrie Irving was the one trade I think everyone, LeBron James, everyone on this roster, uh, members of the Lakers potentially too, could understand that that takes that, them to the next level. They did not get that done. And so now you're 25 and 30. You're two games out of the play-in. You're four games out of the sixth seed. Uh, there was just, we were just talking last week. There were like two games out of the sixth seed, the, four, the fifth seed. Now they're four games out. Uh, they're, so they're, they're, they're getting, uh, they're, they're losing a cushion right now. And I think when you look at the scenarios, Utah, Detroit, Charlotte, what scenario out there, Toronto, what scenario really takes them to the next level? And that's what you're going to see mm -hmm. the next two days be about. Is, and, and I don't know if there is one. Hey, at least they, at least they got an easy game coming up this Thursday with uh, with Milwaukee coming to town. <laughs> it's not listen. It's not getting easier. And again, we talked about all year long how what they need. They need shooting. They need this. They need this. They need that. I think last night this looked like a deflated team. Even Anthony, maybe Anthony Davis is pissed off they didn't go and get Kyrie Irving. I saw a video of him working out pregame, and he just he wasn't in it. I don't know if he was joking or what, but like. He just wasn't in it. He wasn't aggressive at all last night. In a must-win game, your second-best player didn't show up. And, and this was a huge loss moving forward. But, yeah, I, honestly, they've dug themselves such a huge hole. I don't even know if, you know, if a Bogdanovich trade is going to magically get them out of this rut they're in. But I don't know, man. They're they in a sticky situation. And can Look, we all we've just, joked um, all oh, season long. We've joked uh -huh. all season long that this season was about the record and, and that's all they should be playing for. The record is broke now. We're really going to find out how into this the Lakers are going forward. And we already have LeBron grabbing his foot after the record. We know AD. We know Russ is frustrated. We know all that. And they got a real chance to pack it in just as much as they had a chance to make a run. And, and we're going to find out a lot about the Lakers in the next week or so here. Well, I think the great Michelle Beadle said it best at the beginning of the season. They will not make the playoffs. I stand by that just like I stood by it last year. I don't, know, I don't even know what we're discussing at this point. And I'd also like to say to all of those people uh, who were trying to sell their tickets for tens of thousands of dollars for Thursday's game, I am so sorry. You're missing out on a big one. He could have waited, you guys. Just get 30 points and then make make a bunch of money for a bunch of people. Um, there was some other good news last night. The return of one Devin Booker. Oh, are things looking up in old Phoenix? Maybe. How about DeAndre Ayton? 35 points, 15 rebounds. Uh, Suns beating the Nets. Devin had 19, 6, and 5. He played 26 minutes. Um, he missed 21 games. That is no joke with that groin injury, Chandler. So where are we on stock buying in the Suns? Are we back in? I mean, I'm as high as I would say I've been on them all year long. I still don't think they're a contending team yet, but listen, they have the pieces to be a very good team. If they play the way they played last night, which they actually end up almost smoking this game at the end there. But <laughs> DeAndre Ayton dominated. Chris Paul was solid. To get Devin Booker back is, is everything to them because these other guys have got reps. These other guys have got used to the system. These other guys have got, like, Mikhail Bridges has really grown the last 21 games Devin Booker has been out. And you see it afterwards. DeAndre Ayton saying, we got this thing rolling back. We got our guy back. And now we're locked and loaded. Like, they're, they're confident right now. And they are playing very, very well. And when you look with them and I look at the Western Conference, it's wide open. I'm, I'm not scared of anybody. There's a lot of really good teams. I don't think he's going to go John Morant and say we're good in the West because they're not <laughs> that necessarily. But it is wide open. And I think, uh, you know, anything can happen in this conference and they just need to stay healthy. The Cam Johnson being back, they need to get campaign back. And the more healthy they get, I think they're definitely going to continue to win games because they have that experience. They have versatility. They have one of the best pure scores in the league. So they are definitely trending in the right direction. And to me, the West is wide open.
Yeah, I think when you look at the standings, yeah, we love the Sacramento Kings. We all have loved them on this show. And they're just like a game and a half behind them from the three seed. And they're a half a game <laughs> behind the Clippers from the four seed. As bad as we feel like the Suns have been, and they had a rough January and a rough December, and you're losing your best player for 20 games. It, they've treaded water. We, we say that a lot about the Nets. We say that about the Bucks. We say that about a bunch of teams. But they have actually treaded water and turned it around a bit. Have won eight of their last ten. That's a dangerous team. And you look at the top of the conference, the Nuggets, the Grizzlies, the Kings, the Clippers. You, you wouldn't be crazy to pick the Suns over either one of those teams in a series, especially if they go in healthy, if we know Devin Booker's back, and Chris Paul continues to look rejuvenated. He started the season, and we were wondering if he was going to be on this team or starting on, for this team by now. And it looks great now. He's, he's figured it out. He's got it back together. And if they remain healthy, and you do not want to see them in April or May because that top of that, the top of the conference out there, I'm not sure either one of those teams could beat the Suns if they're fully locked in and they have all their guys. Ooh. They have a really strong defensive versatility. They have two great leaders on their team and an incredible scorer in Devin Booker. Like, they have all of the ingredients of a strong playoff team. We've seen them go to the finals two seasons ago, even last year. If they don't get COVID or whatever happened in that game seven, we don't know how they end up as well. So uh, that's a dangerous team, and, and teams need to be worried about seeing them in the opening round of the playoffs. I, I want to talk a little Cam Thomas just because um, what a week this young man is having. 21 years old. What is it? Became the youngest player to have three 40-point straight games, by the way. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm assuming you were at the game. What's it like out there right now? How insane is this for this kid? I mean, back-to-back-to-back to back to back 40s is ridiculous, and we're talking about <laughs> stuff that only LeBron and, like, Kobe have done at this age, and it's pretty absurd. Uh uh, you know, people who follow the team, they feel like he always could have done this. He was stuck behind the rotation behind Patty Mills and sometimes someone like David Duke Jr. But he's always had this talent. He he was the leading scorer as a freshman in the in the in the, in, uh, the nation when he was at LSU. And that was his reputation coming in. He's a bucket. He's a pure bucket. He's been that on every level of basketball. Now, 40 points for a week straight, that's a little ridiculous. But one of the things I do like and shows just how well of a scorer he is, he gets to the line a ton. He shot over 10 free throws again last night. And that's, you know, obviously with a couple of touch fouls at the end because they were up three and wanted to hold him to. But it's been pretty absurd. The question going forward, I think, is can he do this if he's not a dominant ball handler? Can he do this next to Spencer Dinwiddie, next to Kevin Durant, next to whomever else is going to be there handling the ball and bid as a secondary or third scorer? That's going to be interesting. That's where he's going to have to pick his spots. But he's absolutely shown – what he can do if given the opportunity and that's score the basketball. Yeah, this has been so impressive. This is the closest thing to Lanzania that we've seen in, in, in recent years. <laughs> Four, three games in a row of over 40 points, you know, in New York, big market. This kid hasn't really had much opportunity. We've all known he can score the ball. Like Eddie said at LSU, the kid was a bucket. He's a high-ish draft pick. Like, this is what the kid does. He is a professional scorer. And one thing I will tell you, Dem, he's in the rotation for the rest of the season because he, you know, outside of Kevin Durant, he's arguably their second best scorer on the roster. Maybe third with Spencer now. So he's going to get minutes. I guess he needs to find out ways to kind of, you know, play within the system. He's going to have to figure out how to play with Kevin Durant, how to play with Spencer Dinwiddie. But looking at their roster, he's – better offensively than 95% of their team. And this kid deserves to be playing. Uh, and it's really an outrageous week that he's had. I mean, if they've, they've lost, I think, two of the games, this guy's player of the week by far. Like, he is putting up crazy <laughs> numbers. Uh, and like I said, this is uh, insanity. This is, this is very, very similar. And I hope he continues to do it. And I weirdly think he will. Watching him play, this kid is a hooper. I don't think he's going to average 40 points. But this kid is a proven oh. bucket getter. This kid scores in so many different ways. He gets to the free throw line. He can shoot. He can ISO. He can go one-on-one. -on -one. There's nothing offensively that this kid can't do, and he deserves 25 minutes a night at least going forward from this team. Well, he's certainly thriving in this post-Kyrie era, Shams. But as far as the team and the front office, what's the mindset over there with you a know, little more than 24 hours to go before the deadline? 
Cam Thomas has probably been a great positive distraction for this team. And, and like Chandler said, he's been he's been unreal the way he's been playing. And it's not like he's doing it against slouches. Like he he's done it against the Clippers. He just did it last night against the Suns. He's facing Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Terrence Mann. So he's doing it at a high level. And I think this team all along viewed him as a six-man type of guy on a championship contender. Well, I think that vision is starting to finally come true to some extent. We'll see how it looks when they're healthy. But I think this team, they're still trying to navigate and scan the marketplace. What type of star can they go out uh, and get? Is, uh, whether it's a Pascal Siakam, OG Ananubi, John Collins, like what name is out there that you can go get? Uh, the, the, the tough part for them is right now they've got a few draft picks that they can play with. But come summertime, this is a team that's going to have four or five first rounders that they can use. They're going to have contracts that you can trade. Um, so it, it's this weird middle ground that teams like, uh, you know, Dallas, teams like the Nets have found themselves in, uh, you know, over the, over the course of this year and going into the summers. You're going you're gonna to have way more draft picks come summertime than you do now. The Lakers, same thing. The Lakers will have more draft picks than just two unlocked come the summertime. So what's the risk and reward? But uh, they're going to weigh trying to see whether they go all in now or wait for the offseason. Yeah, I think Shams is right. They, you know, look, you have the clock ticking with Kevin. And, you know, the rumors are that he's not going to play throughout the All-Star game. So now you have another two weeks. We have to play without him. You got to make it work. You're going to get Spencer, you get Dorian soon and, and be a much better team. But th they need to find a way to continue to keep winning these games. And when you have a megastar who's 34 years old, who's been playing at an MVP level, you, you do feel the pressure to add now, but they may just be limited by the market. You know, I think in the moment right now, they probably can be beat with a few offers for OG, for Pascal Siakam, for whomever that other star is that's on the market. And, and, and everything below that, I think Shams mentioned it yesterday, there are one draft pick deals. You know, you're talking about Boyan Bogdanovich, uh, the other Bogdanovich. You, you're talking about these guys <laughs> that are going to cost you one pick and aren't megastars necessarily get you over the top. They're probably adding depth. So they have to weigh that because this summer they can offer more and, and who knows who could become available this summer. We know this is the league of disgruntled stars and there's always this list of 25 to 26 year old guys who are just waiting to get on their next team and are going to cost you four or five, six draft picks. So yeah, maybe it is smarter and more measured to wait until, until June and say, Hey, we have all these draft picks. Can we get X superstar? But you also got to wonder we're wasting. Are we going to waste another year of Kevin Durant by saying next summer after already mm. saying that last summer, that's you, you, you have to really consider that. But unfortunately, yeah, it sounds like we're not going to see Kevin until after the all-star break, after the trade deadline, obviously. And, and they continue to slip down the standings. They quietly just dropped to five last night. And, you know, another another four or five games without Kevin, who knows where they end up. They're going to need those wins. And they could use some help uh, right now if they can go get it. How quickly everything changed out there in Brooklyn. Seemingly overnight and seemingly by one man. And he made his first appearance yesterday. Kyrie in Dallas. Uh, first time as a Maverick, as we're seeing him. And he spoke on his time in Brooklyn. Let's take a listen. Um, you know, the reporting and, and the journalism um, that was going to come out of why I left, I, I knew that was going to be speculation. Um, you know, but for me personally... Um, you know, just sitting in the seat today, I, I just know I want to be places where I'm celebrated uh, and not just tolerated or, or, or just, um, you know, kind of dealt with in a way that doesn't make me feel respected. Um, and there were times throughout this process when I was in Brooklyn where I felt very disrespected. Hmm. Isn't disrespect a two-way road? That's an interesting comment. Eddie, he broke up with you. So how are you feeling? <laughs> You're I just mean, one Kyrie handled. Kyrie handled the presser in ways that I expect he would. You know, he, he said a lot, but he said a little. And he tried to keep the cordial, <laughs> kind of couldn't help himself. You know, and then he talks about Kevin and how they, you know, set out to achieve certain things and, and didn't accomplish everything, but had a great time and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, what else is he going to say at this point? Unless he's going to do scorched earth, he's going to have to try to play the middle ground a little bit. I think that's <laughs> what he did. I think he's happy to be in a new team. I think, uh, you know, it was interesting he said he's not talking contract stuff until the summer because apparently that was the issue in Brooklyn, but mm -hmm. it, it's all whatever. I want to see him on the court. I want to be entertained by, you know, that roster and what they can do going forward. And, and the press conference is the press conference. He had to finally pre 
face the media. It's, it's one of the reasons why I was almost positive he was never going to play the game last Saturday because if he had to play for the Nets and then talk about the Nets to the Nets media after very publicly <laughs> asking out, uh, I just – we've already seen them keep him away from media before. I just didn't think it was going to happen. You know, look, he said all the stuff he had to say. Whether he was disrespected or not, I mean, I think there's a good argument that he was. But there's also a good argument that, uh, you know, he's complicit in the disrespect mm -hmm. as well. So it's – it's uh, it's frustrating all around. I think it's even frustrating for him. But, you know, soon we'll be at, back at basketball and can watch that. Yeah, I think the disrespect comment is going to rub a bunch of people the wrong way because then you ask yourself, well, how, how exactly did you respect your teammates? Or uh, throw away the front office. Who cares what your relationship But, like, your teammates, dude. You quit on your teammates a bunch of times, Chandler. Uh, he also mentioned that his work ethic is underrated. How did you receive that? Yeah, I don't think anyone's ever questioned anything about his on the court production, about his work ethic. You don't get handles like Kyrie Irving. You don't get an offensive game like Kyrie Irving without working extremely hard. I don't think anyone's ever questioned that. Um, and he knew like when this trade happened, he knew he was going to have to discuss these things and he knew he was going to have to kind of recap everything that he's went through. He's now dealing with a new organization. He's dealing with new media. Um, like Eddie said, he kind of said a little, but he said a lot and he's disrespected and he's frustrated and he stands by who he is. And, and that's why he apologized for the whole anti-Semitic things. He, he knew he was going to get these questions and you can just tell he's kind of over it. He's frustrated. He wants to just move on. He wants to just play basketball and have a fresh start. So hopefully that's his mindset going forward. Listen, he addressed the media exactly how we thought Kyrie was going to address the media. Uh, he's there to play basketball. He's there to help Luka Doncic. He's there to win games for them. And that's exactly what he needs to do. He needs to keep his head down and play basketball, dominate, play exactly how you're playing in Brooklyn. Just, just be a good dude, be a good teammate, be a leader, you know, what, help these young guys do whatever you can for the next three months. Cause as much as the Dallas Mavericks want this to work out for him, he's auditioning for them too. And then whatever you say, he, he wants to get paid. And and Dallas is really the only option for him to get paid now if this works. Because if this doesn't work, no way a team is taking another flyer on him after another team. So he's found himself in, a, in an interesting situation. And I do think it's perfect fit. I think the guys that he has with Nico and his relationship with Michael Finley, with Mark, guys like Dirk, they have a lot of guys. They have the best sports psychi psychiatrist, uh, DK, hmm. who's going to definitely be listening to him and letting him vent. And like he said, he wants to be seen. He wants to be heard. He wants to be celebrated, not tolerated. This is who he is. And I think the Mavs have the resources to get the best out of Kyrie Irving. And uh, again, it's, it's a dice roll for both. If, if Kyrie doesn't behave, he's not getting paid from anybody else. And if he does it, then the Dallas Mavericks just made a really, really bad trade if he walks in three months. So it's kind of an open-ended situation and you can't really ever know what's going to happen with Kyrie Irving. The biggest thing here is he's getting a fresh slate. And I think that's what Mark Cuban, Nico Harrison, Jason Kidd, that's what they bring him. There was just so much toxicity, so much that went on. Um, and like Eddie said, for sure, it's it's both sides. The, both sides are going to be, you know, at fault at the end of the day. But I think when you look at this situation, you know, to an extent, but I think when you look at the situation, when you think about the contract extension from last summer, those talks, the extension talks recently, the tweet link, uh, there's a lot that I think principally, and I think the conversations that, that were had where, yes, Kyrie Irving did feel this perspective but again on the other side it's you know were you available were you around all the time so both sides you know I think are probably better off moving on and moving to different paths and and now Kyrie Irving gets a clean slate with a new organization different culture different energy different vibe different co-star and I think everything uh, it sounds like everything in Dallas right now is on the up and up and very very positive Oh, only time will tell. We're going to get to the Sham scoop here in a second. Uh, before we do, though, I want you to hear what Pat Beverly said on his latest podcast about our teammate. <laughs> yeah, Sham's been on his ass. Like, Sham's been, like, bring, um, Sham's been breaking out shit, like, quicker, faster. The look of it looks better. Then Woj will just come with, like, one Woj bomb that'll be, like, four Shams in one. Like, damn. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they got a little... <laughs> Wow. Ooh, tail of the tape, Shams. Are you liking it? or what? By the way, his <laughs> pants were something. Um, do you want to address that or do you want to just move on? You tell me. 
No, I want to get Chandler's thoughts on it. Chandler was a Patrick <laughs> Beverly teammate, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pass the ball here. I don't pass the ball yes. much, but I'm gonna pass the ball right here. I also <laughs> love Pat for having his phone on the bench last night recording LeBron as he walked off. Why not? He's it's a I thought he's I was the only one who noticed. He's that. getting material for his podcast, is what he's doing. This barstool <laughs> podcast is the perfect fit. The perfect. Oh platform for Patrick Beverly because he gets to say what he wants and say what he feels and thinks and and we get to listen and it's awesome (laughs) yes we are the uh, beneficiaries of that all right Shams you do have some scoop for us today and a little dunk contest drama please be good what is it so Jericho Sims the Knicks uh you know second year uh yeah second year center um, Jericho Sims has entered the NBA dunk contest. We saw a picture of him a few weeks ago. His head was over the rim when he was jumping, so he can definitely get up there. He has entered the dunk contest, but Shaden Sharp, uh, the Portland Trailblazers huh. rookie, he has dropped out. He's decided to focus more on the second half of the NBA season, his what? rookie year, and really avoid that rookie wall from what I'm told. So no Shaden Sharp in the dunk contest. Jericho Sims in. I know this breaks Chandler's heart. I know he put all the money he yeah. had uh, saved up uh, for the for the rest of his life on Shaden Sharp. <laughs> so, you know, I'm sure this is an unfortunate outcome for, for Chandler. It hey, is, Sean, Chandler. I- First of all, he was going to win this thing. I told you guys this a couple weeks ago, and he was not put on that Rising Stars game. I said, Chandler did I say this. Get, I said, I wouldn't do the dunk contest then because he's right. a valuable piece of I'm petty. Now that I know he's petty, <laughs> I like him even more. Yo, Chandler, <laughs> now, Chandler, Chandler, tell me this. Chandler, tell me this. Yeah. Tell me this. Was, uh, do, do you think he's really focused on the second half of the season, or it's about Rising Stars? I want to hear from a player perspective. He's not doing it because they snubbed him on the Rising Stars. He's not just going to Salt Lake City to dunk six times. He deserves to be in that game. He deserves he's, – again, he is he has made himself a real player. He's a valuable piece on the Portland Trail Blazers. There's guys playing in that game that haven't had as good of a year and that aren't as good of a player as him, and he's frustrated and he's bitter. And I honestly, again, I'm petty. I would do the same <laughs> thing. And to me, it was a no-brainer. He was the headliner. He was for this, for this kind of weak dunk contest class – he was the only one I was excited to watch. And again, I think he's not focusing. He's 19, 18 years old. He's not focusing. focusing the second half of the season would be ridiculous. Right? Like the idea Enjoy of 30 Turks. minutes of your life. <laughs> I know. I said, you know what? Petty Bettys. I love me. I'm going to bring, him, bring him to I, LA and have him hang in Malibu for the weekend. I love the move. Wow. Let's that's a. <laughs> Hold on. You didn't ask for any of us to come hang out with you in Malibu. This kid does this one thing and you're like, come on out. That's the worst. Well, um, by the way, I'm, I'm in Toronto right now. I'm in the hotel upstairs a few floors. The Spurs are here, but I'm going to ask Shams. <laughs> hey, Shams, what are my Spurs up to? <laughs> so they, they made a trade yesterday. And I think they're going to be in a lot of these types of trades. They got Dwayne Dedman from the Miami Heat. Dwayne Dedman has Ooh. only played one game since January 10th. Since he had that incident where he got into it with the coaches. Uh, threw the massage gun on the court. There's a return for Dwayne <laughs> Dedman. I do not think he will play in San Antonio, though. So look for okay. you know the outcome of that situation post-trade deadline. But the one thing to watch with the Spurs, is they're going to be the team with they have ample cap space. When you look at salary dumps, the, the Spurs are going to be right there for that. And I think another thing to continue to keep your eye on, Michelle, and I know your eyes are wired on this, Jakob Poto, Josh Richardson, Doug McDermott, where do these guys end up, if anywhere? Uh, that's what, you know, th- th- those are three really good names to monitor ahead of the deadline uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Michelle, how did you celebrate this trade last night? From- <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing, jerk. Okay? <laughs> you need to chill out. Uh, we'll never see him anyways, according to Sham, so I'm not even going to get excited. But I also, I do dread certain guys leaving when they have to leave. Poor drink out for him, Michelle. Poor I know, just, him, just a little bit. Yeah. Um, Shams, you have, I don't know, 27 hours to just go crush the world. Best of luck. Best of luck. And uh, we'll see you next week. All right. We're taking a break. Coming up next. Jokic, another triple-double last night, and he did it in three quarters. Quick break, and we'll talk about it when Run It Back returns. We are back. That man has a family. Well, that's okay, mm. guys. Little man, big man. Mm-hmm. This was nasty I, too. I the way he, the way he caught this, the ball was like Ooh. lower than the rim, and with to do this with one hand, two feet, bring Ooh. it all the way up and cock it back, and on a big guy, like yeah. this. Yeah, I feel like this it's is gotta quiet. feel great this... when. 
it, it's got to feel amazing when the tip in bounces like the perfect way for you to have a poster. That's that is the perfect that's ridiculous. story. The perfect moment. It does exist. Yeah, that must feel great, actually. And oh, yeah, yeah, I'm in on that. All right. Little man, big man always gets a win. How about Tori Craig? A rejection is always fun. Mm. Mm. Stand That's over him after you block. Yeah, as, as like a guard, you almost never block shots this emphatically. So I, I, I love this, even though it's against the Nets. I still love it. <laughs> yeah. And I'll say Ooh. it's 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 a tough position for the offensive player to be in because you legitimately do not see this man coming and he sees exactly what you're about to do. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, there's nothing. By the way, it's not even it's like a mini stare down, but I almost feel like the idea of he's bored was even more disrespectful. Drew Banks on show angles. By the way, this kid has bounce my boy james dunleavy is his agent and i saw him work out this summer this kid should be in the dunk contest he is an absolute freak well, i mean might as well <laughs> yeah, throw, <laughs> yeah throw, <laughs> makes sense throw him in there come on i love that it's like I mean, no you're... frills it's two white dudes and it's just like the most you know just simple dunk but right on his on his head like this is great yeah like this yeah, tough game this, for the blazers though the still shot of this this poster would not even be dope <laughs> it's, it, it's just meh like but he's popped and that's perfectly. all that matters all right we've got kenya oh, martin is... edge you okay okay now here we go yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is nice dunk contest participant he might be the favorite now yeah he, he might, might be the favorite like, yeah. this is good good genetics <laughs> it's crazy how he, he plays just like his pops but left-handed it's yeah. it's pretty ridiculous Clones. It's crazy that there's a lot of gene pool going on between both of these guys. That's kind of awesome. See, science kids, yeah. it does work. Uh, second <laughs> generation, sense. both guys. Saying there's right? a chance. Both guys. It's, uh, I like I'm this. just saying. Sometimes it works. And they also, a le I know he's left handed, <laughs> but a lefty, a lefty dunk just always looks better. Well, that's just I mean, yeah, yeah. because everything looks weird just, lefty. So it just makes yeah. it look much more difficult. I get it. I totally get it. Side note, do you see the video where they put like, KD shooting, but it was like him shooting left hand. Everybody's stuff. backwards, yeah. yeah. That was really sick. trippy. That's just weird. Yeah, it's trippy. trippy. I feel like I'm drunk or on drugs. All right, Wolves. <laughs> I know, Wolves played the Nuggets, but we really want to talk Jokic because, man, this dude's crazy. Another triple-double. A 146-112 win. Goodness. He had 20 points, 16 assists, 12 rebounds. His 19th triple-double of the season by halftime. Uh, are we... Dare I say, are we almost bored at this point, Chandler, that we don't even make a big deal about it? I mean, we are. It's kind of like the honest effect. These guys just continue to do what they do. And to, to have this, I thought it was halftime. Maybe it was three quarters. To have a triple-double and, and that short of minutes is so insane. It's just becoming like clockwork for this guy. And this game was over, you know, early. Um, yeah. But Part of that is because the way he came out and he dominated him. Michael Porter had a big game. Aaron Gordon had a big game. They're really starting to find these guys that mesh and play well with Jokic. You could throw a bunch of talented guys together and it doesn't always work. These guys have found their way, pick their spots, play off and move without the ball. And obviously everything goes to Jokic. And, and you're right. We are, we're getting numb to his greatness. We're getting numb to the way he plays and he plays so brilliantly, so unselfish. Uh, it really is remarkable what this does, what this dude does with his size and his basketball IQ and his vision. It's crazy. Man. Yeah, this is almost one of the dangers of the media world we live in, right? Where we're just constantly bombarded with this content and constantly talking about it, hearing about it. It's like at some point we're like, ho hum, like yeah, whatever, another triple double. <laughs> but that doesn't mean it's not amazing, you know. If you see a, if you see a magician pull a rabbit out of hat four times. He still pulled a rabbit out of hat. Like, he made a rabbit habit <laughs> out of thin air. It's still amazing. And that's kind of where Jokic is at with this. It's ridiculous how he plays. And he plays, you know, I hate to do, like, the right way, wrong way conversation. But he plays such a pure brand of basketball. And he can be so passive. And he can yes. affect it in so many ways. I mean, a Last lot of the classic. same reasons why, why we go, hey, LeBron is great because he gets rebounds. And he does all this stuff on the court. Jokic does a lot of the same stuff. And I think deserves some of the same reverence. Um, he's been great. He's been incredible to watch. I think, I think there actually might be voter fatigue as we go forward, despite people fighting mm -hmm. it, and it might cost him a third MVP. But even if he doesn't win it, he's still been amazing this year and deserves all the praise he's getting. And I love the turtleneck with the suit. Like Thank I you. love that look. 
It is so like. I don't so like the like, hat, but the turtleneck oh, with the I long like jacket, it. that's fire. No, the whole look is very like, it's a modern Peaky Blinders, which I have nothing but great things to say. Chandler, tell me that's not classy. In the world of oh. Kyle Kuzma's, we need a couple Jokic's. Right? He could, yeah, he could do it. no wrong in my eyes. This guy, he dresses to the nines, he plays to the nines. This guy has figured it out. <laughs> he, he is class, class, <laughs> class. So. Chef's kiss, I love it, and the hat's good, Eddie. You don't know what you're talking well about. We're gonna take we're gonna take a quick break Get right more. here. Uh, John ja Morant, he says <laughs> stuff. This time he says the Grizzlies are the most hated team by the media. Well, we're media. We'll talk about that next when we run it back returns. Well, Bulls played Memphis last night. Ja Morant, 34 points. It's a 104-89 win for Memphis. Grizzlies' second win in their last 10 games. Is this the beginning of the bounce back, Chandler? Uh, yeah, I mean, they did what they're supposed to do. Again, this is a team that they should beat. This is a team that they're ahead in the standings. Obviously, it's a different conference and a team that's been kind of up and down all year long. But yeah, listen, the Memphis Grizzlies are an interesting team. They have the talent. They have the pieces. They just haven't really been consistent. They've had guys in and out of the lineup. Uh, you know, they've had a lot of drama and a lot of stuff kind of surrounding them. Uh, but yeah, this is one of, this is a top four teams in the Western conference. They're going to, they're obviously going to get in, they're going to advance, uh, it's just a matter of if, if they can stay healthy and, and, if, and if they can kind of get a good matchup going into the playoffs. But yeah, I mean, I, I like this team a lot. I love John Morant. I love Desmond Bain. I love Jaron Jackson. Uh, they've had a very good year. They're young, they're exciting. They're fun. They talk a lot of trash. Um, <laughs> they've kind of created this whole identity, uh, and they're running with it, but uh, they're going to get people's people's best shot every single night, just the way they talk and the way they act. And uh, it's they're just going to have to back it up. Hmm. Yeah, they're, they're not surprising teams anymore. They're on the scouting report. They know what these guys are going to do. And like Chandler said, they're working through injuries, suspensions and the like. And, and they've only won two of their last <laughs> 10 games. But they can easily turn this around. I think the All-Star break will be good for them as they're going forward. And even with all that they're dealing with, they're still the two seed in the West. They they still they still haven't even lost any ground. So uh, they're going to be just fine, and, and, and they're really going to have their chance to prove themselves in the playoffs. We're not going to really care about what they do in February, to be honest. Please Look, give us, please us give us Grizzly Warriors first round. Oh, we, uh, yes, please. And nobody do anything stupid that you get like ejected or suspended because we want to yeah, see it. Jaw Jaw's good for quotes, right? I mean, he's given us already a few this season. Here's the latest. You see it on social media. Anything that has to do with the Grizzlies is frontline national TV and national people putting it out. Anything else, it don't be said. So wait, what? What? Is, I don't get it. They're not just getting negative attention. You guys just said amazing blowing things about them, Eddie. Why, why is he being so sensitive right here? Yeah, you know, when the little girl in Memphis got her basketball stolen and then Ja brought her to her game, sat her courtside, so gave her his shoes and all this stuff. I heard about that too. Just like I heard about the laser <laughs> or whatever it was that they were pointing. Mm -hmm. he's, he's overblowing this. And at the end of the day, there needs to be a little bit of accountability. We only talk about Ja supposedly beating up some 16-year-old over the summer because Ja supposedly beat up some 16-year-old over the summer. <laughs> we're only talking about them trash-talking, right. getting pushed around after they do it because they trash talk and they got pushed around when they do it. They were the ones arguing yep. with Shannon Sharp. They were the ones getting pushed around by Donovan Mitchell. We're reporting what they're doing. When they win games, we go, yo, it's amazing they win games. Last year, everybody loved the Grizzlies. The act is a little <laughs> tired. There's no way around that. They, that it, clearly, teams are getting annoyed by it. Klay Thompson has spoken about it. LeBron James has been vocal about it. The, the Cavs are vocal about it. Many teams have been vocal about it. So. If, is, is it negative attention? It's because it's probably negative actions. When they're doing great, we talk about them doing great stuff. Yeah. Um, a lot of people came to Jaron Jackson's defense about the whole blocks controversy and think he's the defensive player of the year. So it's, you know, they're not to look inward with some of this neg negativity stuff and all that. Uh, we're not being overly negative. Trust me, we would much rather talk about Ja Morant in a dunk contest than we would about Ugh. Ja Morant fighting the teenager over the summer and thinking he's a thug or whatever you want to call it. Man. So, um, I, the, that lies at their feet, not at mine. Yeah, and, and everything and everything they've done is self-inflicted, right? Everything they've done is kind of brought on by themselves. And and like I just said, they've created this identity. And they almost embrace this identity. Like I was there. This isn't a national media negative ambush <laughs> on them. I feel like we don't even really talk about them. Honestly, we talk about the Nets. We talk about the Lakers. We talk about big markets. Memphis Grizzlies are a very small market 
that we talk about the issues that they provide us with. We talk, we watch Dylan Brooks play and he's going to do something that's going to irritate somebody. And we talk about it. Um, that's just how it is. And again, that's just the culture and, the, and what they've established there with, with they are tough and they do talk trash and they kind of have this identity now of the new bad boys of the NBA. And, and, and to me, I think they did that themselves and they like that. And they say, things like we're good out West and they say, you know, they have a dynasty and they made this beef with the warriors. Who's arguably the greatest, you know, team of all time. You know, they kind of shoot themselves in the foot a lot with this stuff, but on the same time, they're fun. They're, they're young. They're exciting. They have probably the most entertaining basketball player in the world to watch and John Morant. Um, and, and they are going to get attention because of that. So, uh, they create these situations and stuff. And then the media, again, I was a player once I used to be so confused why this media or why this guy's talking about me, why he's saying it, it's, it's, we're just simply commentating on what we see. Uh, and a lot of times what they, what they give us is negative stuff. I look, if anything, <laughs> I think that laser story got buried yesterday. So that's probably yeah, a good thing just because, and secondly, in any good story or wrestling, the heel is the best part embrace the heel this is a good thing i don't know why this is a negative at all but I've, I, this is a very simple question we have a game tonight between the sixers and the celtics chandler the simple simple question i ask you is right now which of these two rosters would you rather have uh boston for sure mm. I, I think for they're sure. they're they're younger they have the they have uh the best duo i think in the nba um they have the they have the leadership they have the the they just they carry a different charisma and they have a different kind of confidence and maturity uh than philly and, and philly to me has to prove something i think joel's had a great year uh they've been banged up a little bit but to me i, I think i think boston's roster moving forward and currently is better and currently you agree you agree eddie yes i i do and i think the part of it is that their two guys are just younger you know do, Joel Embiid, okay. I think, is the best player between the two rosters. But when you look at Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, they've been battle-tested since they were pups in the league. Like, Jason Tatum was playing the conference <laughs> finals against LeBron as a rookie. So I, I think they are more battle-tested. I think they've shown more in the playoffs as well. And James Harden has made some great runs. But those guys were just in the finals last year. And they're only getting better. And they only look better this year. So, yeah, I'm going with the younger roster. And I, I, I actually think they're going to win tonight, too. They're going to be a great game, though. And I'm definitely not missing this game. Yeah, that's a good one uh, for sure. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not watching Spurs Raptors? How weird. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we make picks. You make money. I almost said it with a straight face when we return. Get a piece of $10 million in bonus bets with FanDuel's Kick of Destiny. All you have to do is bet $5 on Super Bowl 57. And if Gronk kicks a field goal live during the game, you'll get a piece of $10 million in bonus bets. It doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or already have an account. Gronk kick, you win. It's really that simple. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. I just, I can't, I can't get over that picture. All right, so we had our, um, our parlay, our picks yesterday, and... And Chan, guess what? You and I, huge winners. Eddie, gigantic loser. How's it feel? Just another day, just another day in the office, just, Michelle. Just, a, just another I, day. I blame, of, I blame uh, Danny. I blame yeah, Danny. Danny. <laughs> maybe, my, maybe switch my pick. Danny. Oh, that's so great. I would have won. I would have won. That's actually, that's famous actually last words. True. Is, is I would have won the best gambling sentence ever put together. I feel like I've said that a thousand times in Vegas. Okay. Good news is it's our Wednesday. It's our Friday. This is our last one for the week to go out strong, boys. Eddie, what you got? I'm going LaMelo Ball chucking and making at least three threes tonight against the Wizards. Whoa. Over three, excuse me. Uh, two teams that are not going to play defense, that don't really care about what's going on, and LaMelo Ball has no conscience. So I'm expecting way more than three and a half threes. Dang, that's a pretty good one. We haven't had one of those in a while. All right, Chandler. Yeah. Um, I have Paul George over 23 and a half points. I will be at this game. Kyrie Irving is playing, and I just think their defensive assignments rotation is going to be a little all over the place tonight, and PG is going to go get some buckets against them. So Paul George over 23 and a half. You think the Mavericks defensive uh, strategy is going to be off tonight? Okay, I just want to make sure. Um, uh, look, I'm here in Toronto, and 
They're giving the Spurs double digits, so I'm taking it. Yeah, that's right. Plus 10 and a half at Toronto. We did it. This one's going to hit. I know it. We are done for the week. Enjoy the rest of this one and trade deadline tomorrow. Woo. See ya.